During the 20th century, we've made huge genetic progress, increasing productivity of plants and, increase, and increasing their tolerance to adverse conditions. But we've gone about as far as we can go with classical plant breeding. Classical plant breeding, crossing two species in order to, to bring a trait from one species to another or from one variety to another uh, in order to, for example, introduce resistance to disease. But when you cross two parents, you get half your genes from each parent. And so that means when you do that cross, you may get the gene you wanted, that say that introduces res uh, resistance to disease, but you get a lot of garbage along with it. And then you have to do generation after generation of back crosses in order to get rid of the stuff you didn't want and to get, just get the gene that you, that you wanted to bring across. But with the tools of modern genetic engineering, you can go in and snip out that gene that codes for, say, uh, rust resistance in wheat splice it into the variety that you want to get it into, and you've got it there. People have benefited immensely from applications of genetic engineering and medicine. Today we have vaccines available against two, two strains of hepatitis, for example, that are completely the product of genetic engineering. Much of the beer that's brewed, brewed in Europe is brewed with yeast that is genetically engineered. Much of the yogurt produced around the world is produced with starter that's genetically engineered. It seems unreason unreasonable to me that people are willing to inject the products of genetic engineering into their bloodstream, but yet aren't willing to take it down their, down their throat as part of their food supply. It's completely irrational behavior. Uh, every National Academy of Science that ever has looked at biotechnology has concluded that there's no danger to human health and there's no danger to the environment from use of genetic engineering in either human medicine or in food supply.